Welcome to another edition of JSU Connections, the show produced by students and mass communications faculty. I'm Dr. Sunny Fridge, along with my student producer, Michaela Croft. Hello, Michaela. How are you doing this week? Hello, I'm doing fine. Well, you know, we're celebrating Women's History Month, and let's start with a few women from the Magnolia State. We'll give you one right now and a couple later. We'll start with Margaret Walker Alexander. Margaret Walker was born July 7, 1915, in Birmingham, Alabama. She joined the Federal Writers Project after graduating from Northwestern University. She wrote novels and poems about the African-American experience from the time of slavery up to the Civil Rights Movement. Walker taught at Jackson State University until her retirement in 1979. Now, as a professor of English at JSU, she founded the Institute for the Study of History, Life, and Culture of Black People. She was inspired to write the songs of her people from a diverse group of authors ranging from Phyllis Wheatley, Paul Lawrence Dunbar, and William Blake to William Faulkner and the prophets of Hebrew scripture. She was already an accomplished essayist, poet, and novelist. Now at the forefront of a black studies movement, Alexander had the unique opportunity both to be mentored by the likes of W.E.B. Du Bois, James Weldon Johnson, Langston Hughes, Richard Wright, and Sterling A. Brown. And she also was a mentor to writers such as Amiri Baraka, James Baldwin, Nikki Giovanni, Toni Morrison, Maya Angelou, and Sonia Sanchez. Thus, the Institute and its mission reflected her complete immersion in 20th century African American history and culture. Well, today, we have another young lady making history, an aspiring writer. Our guest is a mass communications junior. Akela Harris is a 20-year-old writer, poet, blogger, and motivational speaker. And she can now add author to her list. She's just released her first book, Liberation, The 20-Year Journey It Took to Heal My Soul. Welcome, Akela Harris. Hello, how are you? It is so good to see you. You're a student here at Jackson State. You're a member of the JSU chapter of the National Association of Black Journalists. And now you are a writer, and we have it right in our hands, hot off the press. Liberation, the 20-year journey it took to heal my soul. Now, before we talk about your book, we want to talk a little bit about you. And what I'd like to find out, on your blog, it says, I'm a simple woman. It's complicated. Yes, so who ma'am. is Akela Harris? Um, Akela Harris, uh, first of all, she's a lover. Um, I'm a lover of all human beings, and that transcends, you know, beyond religion, race, uh, all of that. Uh, and at my core, I really just want to help people, uh, which is why I founded my foundation, uh, A New Breed. And that's just to give back to the homeless. I want to, you know, touch them, give directly back to the people who I get to interview. I'm doing a documentary over them actually now. So uh, that's that's who I am, the essence of who I am. Well, now tell me, what was the inspiration for writing your book? Um, I, it, it honestly, it was a point where I thought I was going to break down. And uh, that's when I realized uh, somebody else needed to know how I made it through. Uh, so I started documenting from my earliest memories, you know, that I could I could possibly remember uh, everything that I'd been through to the point of where I was about to break down, and um, and this and just who I am today and what kind of person that made me. Uh, I just wanted to inspire somebody else along the way. Well, I can tell you your book is inspiring. And, you know, um, I saw at the beginning of your book that you dedicated the book to your grandmother, Lois Jean McCollum. Yes, ma'am. And tell me a little bit about her and what she meant to you, because very early on in your book, you talk about her. Right. Uh, My grandmother, she was my everything. I love my my mother always left me with my grandmother when she went to work or went out with her friends or anything. Uh, She was my best friend. We watched old films together everything uh Mm -hmm. she taught me how to pray that was the first person to teach me how to pray and all uh, and everything like that uh she died when i was six years old but i still have very fond memories of her you talk a lot about her Mm -hmm. her her, um inspiration and i love how you end each chapter with a bible verse so you really are um trying to help inspire others so take us through what will readers find out about akela harris and what do you want us to take away uh, from your book, uh, you will find out the good, the bad, and the ugly. I don't, I didn't hold anything back in this book. Uh, no holes barred. Nothing, nothing at all. Um, it took a lot out of me to do that too. 
uh, to be that raw and that honest, but I felt like somebody needed it. Uh, you'll what else will you find out? You'll see my faith. Uh, my determination to succeed. I will not give up. I refuse to give up. Mm-hmm. Um, How close were you to giving up? Talk, tell our listeners a little bit about some of the challenges that you either went through or overcame. Okay. Um, we can start off. I was molested three times. Um, my mother, uh, when we lived in Michigan, um, she worked third shift at General Motors. So the only time I seen my mother for about five months was only on the car ride to my night care and um I finally convinced her that I didn't want to be there anymore because it just you know I didn't want to be there so she started letting me stay home alone how old uh, were you then I was 10 I was 10 when she started letting me stay home alone so uh there's just a lot of struggles and a lot my mother lost her job Mm -hmm. lost her car we lost a lot of stuff in Michigan were you ever homeless uh we were very close to it Mm -hmm. I will say that um, How bad did it get? I mean, I, I believe I read some part of your book where it really was tough for you to, like, move in with some folks and right. you had to deal with so much going on. Right. And um, you learned how to turn off and withdraw into yourself. Right. Uh, my, me and my mother moved in with another woman and her five children. And that was extremely hard for me, uh, being that I am an only child. Uh, but not only just because I'm an only child, but I, I didn't have a bed. I didn't have a closet. I didn't have anything. I slept on the floor. For the first three months we were there um so Mm -hmm. that was really hard for me what else um you know even going back a little bit um there were revelations at many points in your life uh made me chuckle a little bit uh when you first learned about black history and you (laughs) confronted your white teacher yes ma'am and i remember in the third grade her name was miss schroeder at mira elementary in uh, beloit wisconsin and she was, you know, trying to teach us about black history, you know, as honestly as she could. I know she didn't mean any harm, but it was the first time that I heard beyond slavery that black people weren't treated fairly. So when she told us to ask our grandmothers, and my grandmother had just, you know, passed away recently, and our grandfathers, you know, their involvement in the civil rights movement, my mind wasn't, you know, putting together the time frames of slavery and the civil rights movement. So I, you know, I had to ask her the question, you you mean to tell me y'all put my grandmama in chains? <laughs> and her face just turned so red. Like she you, she didn't have any idea how to answer that question. <laughs> right. So she just called my mom later on. But uh, thankful, thank, I'm thankful my mother, you know, she told me never to stop asking questions, always be inquisitive. And if they can't answer it, then, oh, I don't know, it's fine. Right, so you didn't get in trouble for asking that question. And, and that made a good uh, 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 you know something positive and favorable in your life because right. typically you know you get your mom has to come up and they're like hey why did you say that right. and that probably really um, has been a uh, something that has followed you throughout your life you, you're outspoken mm-hmm. you like to say what's on your mind and um, you're hoping that by speaking out about some of the challenges that you faced in your life that is going to help others mm-hmm. um, you talked um, a little bit about your relation with excuse me your relationship with your mom what about your dad um i've honestly only seen my father six times uh that i can remember Uh, i'm pretty sure he was there maybe in and out when i was a baby baby but um as of today i can only remember seeing my father six times i kept track in my in my journals how many times i've seen my father Mm -hmm. but our relationship is improved it's all virtual Mm -hmm. um he started calling me and he's um He's a teacher now. Uh, he's in church. He's, you know, you know, to get his minister's training license. He was taking care of my little brother and my little sister, so he's so much better. And I uh, I let go of, you know, any of the resentment I held toward him for not being in my life, being in and out of jail and drugs, whatever, mm-hmm. uh, just because I couldn't do that. Uh, I don't want to die on bad terms with anybody. Mm-hmm. Now, I wanted you to read something um, in your book. Um, also, I would like to let our listeners know that your your book includes uh, um, things from your journal, poetry. Um, sometimes you would just remember things as it comes to you. Sometimes it was really hard for you to remember things, but mm-hmm. it was all about, about getting through that process and growing and healing. What will you read for us? Uh, I'll read, uh, it's on page 45, I'll read um, a letter that I wrote to my father Mm -hmm. when I was younger uh, and God too and I said Jesus I know you love me but it seems like you hate me I don't have a way to church and a lot of bad things have happened to us since we moved I'm sorry for letting you down can you please tell my dad that me and my mom need him now everything was okay at first but now it's not 
Maybe she will want to be with him again. I just want a normal family. God, please help us. If you hear me, can you do something by next week? I'll do better in school and I'll pray more. P.S. Could you help me get in contact with Jesse? <laughs> wow. Now, who's Jesse? Uh, Jesse Jazz was my best friend mm -hmm. uh, in Wisconsin. We did absolutely everything together. She was adopted. Uh, I forgot. She had a rough, you know, past already. But um, I can just remember going to water parks together, taking people's mail in the apartment complex that we lived in, taking their mail out of their mailboxes and scattering it all over or putting it in different mailboxes so everybody would have to just go to everybody else's houses. We just, we did everything together. Wow. So what brought you to Mississippi? How'd uh, you get here? Well, I... I went to Russ College last year, actually, and um, I did well there, but I, I felt like it was just too small of an atmosphere for me. Um, so my cousin, Erin Mercer, she recommended Jackson State University. This is where she pledged uh, Alpha Kappa Alpha. This is where she did everything, got her start. She's a public relations specialist in Nashville now, mm -hmm. and she told me that Jackson State would be a good move for me, so I, I trusted her. And has it been? It has. It's ha it has. It's been awesome, actually, mm -hmm. especially since I jumped into uh, the National Association of Black Journalists with you. Mm -hmm. um, that's been amazing for me. And it's Dr. Just, Dilworth, yes. you, you mentioned us in the beginning of your book, and we I were did. so honored. And Dr. Dilworth, you were, you've been in her writing class, and you you know you allowed her to read your book, and you shared it with my me as well. So it's um you know we're, we're really glad about that. Um. In terms of writing your book, uh, t tell me about it. How did you manage? So many students say they want to be an author or they want to write a book. Mm -hmm. You're the first student that I am aware of in the Department of Mass Communications. I've been here since 2000. That's actually done it while they were still a student. I know it's a lot thanks to technology, but it has a lot more to do than that because this probably had to be a, uh, you know, a real labor of love. Yes. Uh, it took me three months to write my book. Only three um, months. That's not bad. No, That's no. not bad, girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it took me three months to write it, and it took me three days to figure out how to publish it. Was that why mm -hmm. late at night, sometimes I'd go by the uh, writing lab, and you'd be there? Yes, ma'am. And we were always like, what is she working on? Yeah. <laughs> yes, ma'am. So That's what I was working on my book. Uh, mm -hmm. I was in here like it was church, like it was my religion, faithfully, every night, trying to figure out, okay, so how do I get my book cover right how do I do this how do I do that and mm -hmm. I, I ended up self-publishing and just going through a site uh, called create space mm -hmm. and uh, that's about it you buy your ISBN mm -hmm. and everything else is kind of set up for you so now so what do you want to do how do you want to get others to um, read your story tell your story I believe if I'm not mistaken you have social media and you've been sharing bits and pieces from your book tell me about that yes ma'am um, I have an Instagram account Michaela Harris uh, underscore underscore a Facebook account and Twitter and all that and I um, I just share uh, parts of my spoken word on here and, and parts of the book uh, hopefully that will resonate with the uh, whoever reads it mm -hmm. and motivate them to want to you know check out the book or something like that what's been the response from your, your, your fellow students um, it's actually been amazing better than I thought you know as an artist I kind of never think anything I do is good enough uh, until I see somebody else's reaction from it. But um, I've been feeding off you guys' energy, and it's been amazing. My professors, mm -hmm. students, uh, people from all across the United States that are buying it on Amazon. It's Dr. Just, Meredith loved it that she mm -hmm. was, you gave her an autograph. Now I need mine, okay? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> yes, and, uh, you know, I, I think it's great that we are getting behind you. Um, so we're excited for you, so we really want you to continue on. Um, do you plan to have a book signing, hopefully, within the JSU campus? Because we certainly would love to help you hook something up here. Yes, ma'am. I, I actually am. Uh, I want to be uh, kind of joining another author here on campus. Her name is Nako, and uh, we're going to see what we can do Great. as far as a book signing here on campus. Mm -hmm. um, somewhere. We'll figure it out. Um, who inspires you in terms of um, other writers? Martin Luther King. Many people don't know uh, Martin Luther King for being a writer, mm -hmm. but I, I literally have a book um, as thick as my hand mm -hmm. uh, over essays and stuff that he wrote on newspapers, on napkins, on everything. Mm -hmm. And um, when I read his words, they resonate so deeply with who I am, like my the very core of my being. Mm -hmm. Uh, a lot of people thought Martin Luther King was weak because he taught a you know nonviolence and peace and all of that stuff. Um, 
you'd be shocked to see how many uh, African Americans did not agree with his tactics uh, because mm -hmm. when he started doing what he was doing, marching and protesting and stuff like that, that meant now the, the, the dogs have to come to our neighborhood. Right. Now the KKK has to come and bomb our homes, not only yours, you know. So a lot of people just wanted peace, but he was really... A dis, you know, a revolutionary. He disturbed the atmosphere completely right. of what people wanted, and that's who I am. I um, I say what I feel, and I and I leave it at that. Mm -hmm. I'm um, I feel like God gives me revelations about things that I need to tell people, mm -hmm. uh, young people especially. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it's not going to be agreeable all the time, but I'm okay with that. I'm okay being a person that's not liked by all. Right. Of for the greater good. I think I found that out early. <laughs> we, can we can agree to disagree, yes, can't we? <laughs> Wonderful. Now, on the back cover of your book, I love what you wrote, and I just wanted you to share that with our listening audience. Okay. Uh, it says, I wrote this for you. I exposed all of my wounds so that we could heal together. I just hope you're not afraid of the journey ahead. I need you to understand that it's okay to be exactly where you are, just as long as you don't stay there. This is not a reach the top quickly book with a scheme for false success. The plan is to redesign how you look at your struggles, not eliminate them completely. I'm not telling you that your journey of restoration and healing will be easy, but it will all be worth it. Let's get free together. Wow. So deep. Um, and so proud. We are so proud Thank of you. you. Um, since I do have a student here with me, um, Michaela, I just wanted to get your thoughts on what you think about uh, Kayla. <laughs> well, first off, I want to say it's just an honor to see someone my age doing great things. At such a young age, you have so much determination, and I'm very eager to read the book. But I do Thank have you. a question, and I'm going to make it quick. Mm -hmm. What kept you going? I know you're very spi spiritual, and mm -hmm. you know, we're a college student, so you always have classes. But what right. really gave you that um, push? I think... I Quite simply put, it was God, uh, just my spiritual life with God. I knew that it was either, at one point in my book I wrote, it was breakdown or breakthrough. I either had to give up completely or find a use for all the negative energy that was kind of taking over me. So I just, it wasn't, you know, I didn't lose the energy completely. I just redirected where I was putting it. Uh, and, and all the negative energy, everything that was draining me, uh, it was a lot. So when I started putting it towards something positive and said, okay, I'm going to do something every day to get me closer to my dreams. Will Smith has a, a quote that says, as, when you want it as bad as you want to breathe, that's when you'll get it. Mm -hmm. I wanted to get this book out as bad as I wanted to breathe. Mm -hmm. So I was writing at night. I was, I was up here at the East Center until 6 o'clock in the morning sometimes. 4 o'clock in the morning, the security guards was like, I forgot you were back there. <laughs> so wow. that's it. I love it. That's, that's great. So... Um, want to talk about one more thing following up on uh, Michaela and I don't want to give your whole book away but what was one of the most down times for you where you weren't sure if you were going to live or die um or just seemed so hard that you wanted to give up oh that was that was last year honestly um around I started writing this book it was about three months ago, September, December, November, September. Well, last year, September, mm -hmm. uh, I can remember driving back to Jackson State, and uh, I forgot what had happened. It was something, but I, I'd been just going house to house because I didn't want to uh, be where my mother was at the time, and uh, I was just really, really down. I was really depressed driving back here, and I usually talk to God when I feel like that. Uh, but this time I just started crying. I was just boohooing crying. And I really contemplated. I said, well, you know what? I wonder who would show up to my funeral. Mm -hmm. Who would who would come and who wouldn't come. And it was almost like a I didn't care kind of over me of if I let go of the wheel, if I didn't, you know. I just, I don't know. It was it was kind of like everything was happening around me. I wasn't I wasn't doing anything on my own. But then, like, this big ray of sunlight, I promise you, like, the sun came out of nowhere and mm -hmm. started burning my face. I was like, what is this? Right. <laughs> Let me be depressed, God. Yes, yes. <laughs> but um, it was just kind of like a revelation that I, I had to do something. Mm -hmm. I had to. Um, this is my release. Cathartic, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Well, we're certainly glad that you persevered, and we're 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 anxious to see what's next for Kayla. Thank you. you know, so you're a junior, so you won't graduate until next year. Yes, ma'am. Um, but you know, so we look for some other great things to happen from you as a result of your book, and you know, you also have other information. What's your website? Uh, AkaylaHarris.squarespace.com. Okay, so we also will put a link on our JSU Connections Facebook page. So thank you so much. Our guest has been Akela Harris, author of Liberation, The 20-Year Journey It Took to Heal My Soul. Thank you and best wishes, Akela Harris. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be back. Tune in to WLEZ Radio. The sound of the